Hey guys, Robert here, and today I'm going to be doing something a little different. Video games are a big part of my personal story, so I wanted to incorporate that piece of me in this story. So today, I'll be telling you the story of how to build a character from the ground up in one of my favorite video games, Cyberpunk 2077. My fellow gamers will know that the history of Cyberpunk is fraught with game-breaking bugs and is kind of the poster child for studio executives ruining video games. Cyberpunk 2077 is a video game based on the tabletop RPG, kind of like D&D. Given this history, it's no surprise that this video game is an expansive RPG which allows you to build your character from the ground up, choosing how your character looks and what kind of playstyle fits you best. The game takes place in an alternate history version of Earth set in a cyberpunk world in the year 2077. People are quote-unquote chromed out with cyberware that enhances their body in a variety of ways. You will be exploring the world of Night City as a character named V and navigate an ultra-capitalistic world where the only governing bodies are the corporations and the street gangs of various sections of the city. As you follow V on their journey, you'll embark on a mission to save your own life as you are getting essentially eaten alive from the inside out by a rogue virus that's been implanted into your cyberware. I won't go into too much detail about the plot or the characters, but suffice to say you'll find yourself with unlikely allies, devastating losses, and be faced with a variety of moral dilemmas. And like people are fond of saying in this franchise, there are no happy endings in Night City, so you'll have to make the best of what you were given. Essentially this video will go over how to build your character and what it takes to be the best possible version of one of my favorite builds in this game, the throwing knife build. I'll be going over what items you'll need and how to progress throughout the game to make the best use of your time. This is a bit of a hybrid playstyle of stealth and quick combat encounters. The skills and items we pick up will increase the damage of your throwing knives and make you agile enough to avoid open combat for the most part, while also being able to dispatch enemies quickly once you have been noticed. Think of yourself as a ninja, stealthily taking out your enemies before they notice you, but capable of taking them down quickly once they have noticed you. This build relies heavily on critical hit multipliers, as you'll be throwing your knives, aiming for the head, or weak spots on enemies. This will allow you to do crazy amounts of damage, and will actually return your throwing knives to your hand like a boomerang once the proper skills have been acquired. Additionally, we will be able to slow down time for ourselves, giving us more time to line up headshots and give us space to heal and reposition ourselves. Starting off with the cyberware, these items will give your character passive boosts to your stats and special skills. These items are assigned to various parts of your body like legs and hands and eyes, and every build will use a different operating system. There are three major cyberware pieces you need to make this build optimal. The first required one is your operating system, which will be the Militech Apogee Sand Devastan. The Sand Devastan will give you the ability to slow down time for yourself and not others, allowing you to move at extreme speeds compared to your enemies. This will allow you to line up very critical headshots and will make this throwing knife build shine. The next one you'll need is the Axotl. This cyberware synergizes well with the Sand Devastan mentioned above by reducing the cooldown time every time you neutralize an enemy. This will allow you to slow down time more often, making the more protracted fights a little bit easier. The last required cyberware would be the Kuroshi Cockatrice Optics. This is an eye cyberware. This cyberware will increase your critical hit chance by up to 35%, meaning you'll be doing more damage more often, and this will synergize well with a few character perks that we'll discuss later down the line. For the rest of the cyberware, it's really up to you. There's a lot of options. Some of my personal recommendations would be the reinforced tendons for your legs, which unlocks the ability to double jump, and the second heart cyberware, which will revive you from any lethal damage in combat once every five minutes. With a level cap of 60, you are able to max out 3 of your skill trees and take one more all the way up to 18. For this build, we will be ignoring the intelligence tree and leave body at 18. 
The main trees you'll want to focus on early are the reflexes tree and the cool tree. Essentially, the reflex tree will increase your mobility, making you a more difficult target to hit and able to escape when things look dire in battle, whereas the cool tree will make you more deadly before combat begins while sneaking around and after combat has started. The more important skills you'll want from these trees are the midair dash from the reflex tree, which allows you to fly around combat, essentially getting to the point where dashing midair will refill your stamina instead of using it, making it possible to move further, faster, and throw more knives while also making sure you can retrieve your knives fast enough that it will feel like they never leave your pocket. Thanks to the juggler perk, which automatically retrieves your throwing knives every time you dispatch an enemy via headshot or critical hit, which with our handy cyberware mentioned above will also be virtually 100% of the time. The rest of the skills are kind of up to you and your personal playstyle. Some honorable mentions would be the finisher perks, which allow you to lunge at an enemy who is weak and perform a finishing attack, which will restore some of your health with another perk, and also increase your critical hit chance with a couple other perks. There are a variety of weapons to choose from, and thanks to the critical hit bonus we will be getting, there's no bad choice, but for your three main weapons, I would suggest the following. The first one is the Agao. The Agao is a throwing hatchet by way of Thor's hammer. It does massive damage, though it does not have a very high headshot multiplier. This will be your main open combat weapon. In addition to its massive base damage for a throwing weapon, it also triggers an electrical explosion on hit, which will do additional damage to your target and anything nearby. It's also a great answer to the many robots and drones you'll encounter, which would normally be a weak spot of this kind of build. For a secondary weapon, I would recommend the Fang. It's a great secondary weapon for a couple of reasons, and not just for style points because, let's be honest, this thing just looks kind of cool. The Fang has an extremely high base damage, and though it suffers from a lower headshot multiplier, like the Agao, it has the special ability which cripples enemy movement on hit. This can be used even against the most difficult enemies in the game to trivialize the encounter in the right circumstances. Paired with the skill acquired in the Cool Tree which blinds enemies on headshots, the Fang is a must-have weapon for this kind of build. Though the build is set up to make sure our throwing knives return to us instantly upon throwing them, there's always a chance that you miss your shot or somehow don't get a critical hit. In cases like that, your knife has a cooldown time in which it will return to you. The knives previously mentioned have fairly long return times of around 8 seconds for the Agao and 5 seconds for the Fang. While that might not seem like much time, 8 seconds in the heat of battle can be the difference of life and death. That's where the Punk Knife comes in. With a minuscule 1.4 second return time, even in the worst case scenario, you will never be without a weapon. Additionally, the Punk Knife sports a 150% headshot multiplier, making this my go-to stealth weapon. Punk Knives also have the capability to add up to two weapon mods, making it more customizable for your playstyle. There are a million ways you can fine tune this build to make your ultimate throwing knife ninja, but this is a great starting place. Early on in the game you're going to feel a little bit squishy and like you're not doing as much damage, and I would highly recommend picking up a good katana in the meantime to help you out with those lower levels. But once you start finding the proper equipment and level up a few times, you'll be flying around the battlefield in style. Thanks for watching my video guys, hopefully this was a fun little uh, story that's a little bit different. And I am excited to see your guys' stories. Thanks.